Hi, Holly Mecker here with Instructional Tech. We're here to talk about the evaluation platform we use to evaluate teacher effectiveness called Standards for Success, or SFS for short. As teachers, we can use this platform to upload artifacts to use as evidence of our knowledge and expertise, view our current and past observations and evaluations, and to enter our PLC and personal goals for the year. It is a great resource if you're looking for ways to specifically grow and move up on the teacher effectiveness rubric. Let's go ahead and jump in to SFS and take a look around. Here I am at SFS. For Elkhart teachers, we're going to be logging in using your Google account. So we're going to go ahead and click this option right here. Once you're logged in, it opens up into the overview page. From this page, you can really see a snapshot of all the different pieces that come from within SFS. At the top of your page, you'll notice you have your evaluation items. You'll see that you either have your goals, your primary goal, and your secondary goals. You may have some artifacts, and then you may have required walkthroughs and a formal evaluation that have yet to be started. If you do not yet have your primary goal and your secondary goal listed under your evaluation items, I'm going to show you how to do that today. If we scroll down, you'll also notice that we have our teacher effectiveness rubric. This rubric currently should be blank um, and only have all the different domains and areas within the rubric if you wanted to browse that. Let's go ahead and take a look at how you add your primary goal and your secondary goals. Under evaluation items, I can tap the carrot next to add item and I can choose a different piece that I want to add into my SFS portfolio for this school year. For example, this is where I can add my primary goal or I can add my personal goal. I'm gonna go ahead and tap my primary goal. If this is your first time in SFS for this school year and you have not yet filled out your primary goal, your page should look blank just like this. So this is where you will enter your goal, your action plan on how you're going to meet your goal, what the target is, and then what that would look like if you were highly effective, effective, needing improvement, or ineffective. You may also be interested in adding in artifacts. Artifacts are simply evidence of your knowledge, of your expertise, of what you're doing in the classroom. So in order to add an artifact, I'm again gonna push that carrot and I'm gonna choose artifact. This should open up a new page of where you can add your artifacts. So first we're gonna enter a title and then you'll add your description. You can also include links to different items in here as well. So if you have a Seesaw activity that you would really like to highlight, or you would like to have your Canvas course linked, you can type whatever word you would like linked, push the URL button, and type in your URL here. When you're done entering the information, you have two options. You can save it as a draft if you're not done adding information to that artifact, or you can save it and send it to your administrator. You'll notice here in one of my artifacts, it is saved as a draft. And the reason I have it saved as a draft is because I am not done adding to this artifact list. Here are my artifact details. Notice I'm gonna be adding information for every month of the year. And so I'm keeping this updated, so it's less work for me to do at the end of the school year. And so I just continue to add to this and then save it as a draft. When I'm done, I'll then release that artifact to my evaluator. Here's an example of a completed artifact. You'll now notice that there is a comment under the comment section, and also the rubric has been completed. So as you scroll through your rubric, you'll notice sections are highlighted based of what they are seeing in your artifact. So if you have an area you are specifically looking to grow in, adding an artifact is an amazing way to prove and to show evidence of where you are on the rubric. Here is one example of how you can see artifacts and observations going hand in hand on the effectiveness rubric. Notice here, this example has two formal observations and then one evaluator artifact. So on the rubric, we can see that the observations are linked by a number one or two and the artifacts are listed by an A. If you had multiple artifacts, they might also be listed as an A, B, C. So observations are listed as numbers, artifacts would be listed as letters. 
So in domain one, we see that this example is proficient both with the artifact and the observation. However, in 1b, the example is now distinguished with both the observation and the artifact. Here in domain three, you can see that at times, our artifacts and our observations are not the same. So for in 3a, you can see this person was proficient in their observation, but because they have an artifact, they are able to show that they are also ha are distinguished in that area. This example shows how important it is to add artifacts. The person who evaluates you cannot always see everything when they're in your room for that 45 minutes. You wanna make sure they know what you do are doing every single day in your classroom. Add artifacts to make sure they are aware of what's happening within the four walls of your classroom. If you are looking for specific areas of how to grow and how to move forward on your teacher effectiveness rubric, your best options are to look at previous year's rubrics to see what areas you were not showing strengths in. You can rotate between your different evaluations for different school years on your overview page in the top right hand corner. If I push the caret next to evaluation ending June 2023, you can see all four years that I've been in Elkhart, I can go back and view all of those different rubrics to see maybe where I need to show some growth. So that's the rundown. Um, it's pretty easy to go ahead and navigate through once you know the right places to look. Um, so when we're adding items, remember this is where you can add your, your PLC goal, your student outcomes goal, your secondary goal. This is where you can add different artifacts to demonstrate your understanding. If you have any questions, be sure to let us know. Like and subscribe to our channel and we'll see you next time.